Hello hackers and welcome to another tutorial for Hexmanic Advance. This tutorial is going to focus on the new map editor that was added in version 0.5 on Christmas Day. Um, I don't have too much of a script for this video, it's going to be mostly off the cuff. But we're just going to go over some of the new features available in the map editor and see how it goes. <clears throat> so to start out, you'll notice the go-to menu now has a new option in it uh, for opening the map editor. And we'll go ahead and click that real fast just to see what that does. Um, that goes ahead and opens up the map editor in another tab. Um, that's not the only way to do it though. We can also just open it from the, the go-to menu. So for example, right here, if I was to type in, um, for example, route one, then I can go into my map section and I can see all the routes that have a one in them. So, you know, 16, 11, I'll say route one, but we're just gonna go to route one that way. That's another way to do it. Um, and then it's also possible to open it actually from the data that has the maps in it as well, um, inside the data.map section, but we're not gonna focus on that right now. Um, let's talk briefly about how to move around using the map editor. Well, the, the main way to do it would be through the middle click button. If I middle click on a map and then drag around, I can move the map up and down. I can move to the maps that are nearby by dragging up and down on it like that. Um, if there's some empty area around, you can also just click and drag on the empty area. That one you can do a left click. It doesn't have to be middle click. Um, and finally, you can also use the keyboard. So if I press up, 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 down, 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 left, right, left, right, um, that's gonna move the map around as well. Other than moving around, we also have uh, the ability to zoom in and out. Again, using the middle button, we're going to zoom in by scrolling up or zoom out by scrolling down. Um, as you scroll down, you'll notice that more maps appear further and further away, which is gonna make the editor a little bit slower, um, but you'll be able to see more of the world that's connected to the map that you're on. I'll go ahead and zoom back in, you'll see that some of those maps go away. If you don't have a middle click button, you can also use the plus and minus buttons on your keyboard to zoom in and out, or the little plus and minus buttons up here in the corner. Um, make sure that you do have the focus on the map before you start trying to use the keyboard, or you might you know, end up working inside of a text box or something like that. Okay, so now that we've talked about how to move around and zoom, let's talk a little bit about how to edit. Um, the simplest way to edit is right-clicking a block and then left-clicking somewhere else that lets you draw that block. You can also left-click and drag to draw lots of the block. Um, you can also, if we go down here, we can double-click to fill an entire area that was one tile with another tile. Um, that can be useful for things like that. That's not really what we want to do, so we're going to undo. Let's us undo all of those changes. Um, now we're going to um, talk about movement permissions a little bit. So you can see whenever I select a block, it's automatically selecting uh, the movement permission based on the block that I select. So if I select this part of the house, that's the wall. If I select the grass, that's you know elevation to passable. Um, and you can also change that yourself if you want to. So if you wanted to select an unusual movement permission, you can do that. The same thing happens if you select um, a block normally. If I select over here, you can see that my um, my movement permission is changing based on which I select. And that's also changing the highlight that you see around here. Right now, all of the little squares are showing you which blocks um, have that same movement permission of wall. And if I go and select a different block like grass, then it's showing me all of the blocks that have that grass movement permission. Likewise with selecting water by right clicking it, um, or you know selecting the water tile. Um, that's the other thing to mention is that as I select blocks over here, it's then showing me which block I have selected over there, which can be useful. Um, I can also select multiple blocks. So if I want to just make another house, I can just right click and drag. Now I've got an entire house selected, so I can click down here and that gave me a house. I just deleted some signs. I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to undo. Um, so let's go ahead and move around. Um, talked about movement permissions. Let's talk about, uh, let's just go ahead and do a, a sample exercise here. What we're going to do is we're going to add a new area over to the east side of Route 1. Um, and this is just going to help me have a, an opportunity to talk about some of the other features that are available. Um, so first we're going to right click on this um, connection and we can use it to create a new map. It's going to ask us where we want to put it. It doesn't really matter where we put it. This is just for our own organization. We're going to make a new map bank. Press OK. There's our new map. Um, we're going to go ahead and click on that map and that lets us adjust the size here. So let's make it a little bit smaller. 
that's about how big we want it to be. Um, and now uh, we want to uh, notice if I zoom in, I don't see the edges anymore. That's the border block. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out though, and you can see the border block's not aligned here. So I want to move this uh, up or down a little bit. And I can't really, like, this is my selected map right now, so I want to actually move the connection of this map in association with it. So I'm going to grab these little arrows here and drag that down a little bit. There we go. And that's where I want it. I can move that up and down if I want. And that is changing both connections. So if I click back and forth, you can see that it's still aligned. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's go ahead and um, modify this area here. So this is going to be how we're going to connect into our new map. I'm going to go ahead and double click to fill it with my grass tile. And since this has the same border already, I want to go ahead and fill out some trees. So let's go ahead and select like that. And I can drag. That'll give me my tree. But I, I want to have the bottom of a tree there. So I'm going to select the bottom of a tree, drag like that. And for this edge here, I want to go ahead and have the edge the same like that uh, and we'll go ahead and go around. I'm noticing now that the this height is right on the top but it's not what I want on the bottom. I'm just going to make it one tile bigger that way it's aligned there too. Um, okay so that's what I want. Let's go ahead and uh, put some trees on the bottom. I just want the tops of the trees I guess like that so when I zoom out you can see how that's going to be connected. Alright so I've got this little area let's give a little bit of grass and if I'm going to have some grass in it then I definitely want to have some wild Pokemon too. So we'll go up here to create some wild Pokemon and now I need to pick where I want them to be. Let's put them in the grass that makes sense and it brings us over here to this table. Um, we're just going to put the starters in it so let's put in Charmander good let's put in uh, Squirtle, good, and let's put in Bulbasaur, good. Uh, level two and three is okay. Let's just copy those and then paste them a couple times because we're okay with just having those three Pokemon over and over again. All right, so now that we've got our Pokemon selected, that brought us back to our primary tab, so we can go switch back to our map editor. And now if I hover over this, you can see that I've got, that still says grass times 12 minutes back. Why does it still say that? Edit wild data, show Pokemon in grass. That's remembered. Let's go ahead and unload this map. Maybe that'll fix it. There we go. So this is still a, a new map editor. There are a couple issues with it like that, um, but not too many, hopefully. There we go. So you can see the Pokemon there. And if I hover over here, it'll show you, there we go, Charmander, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur uh, are the grass Pokemon that will appear in the grass in this map. So yeah, this is still uh, a bit early. There's going to be a couple bugs when you're trying to use it, um, but we'll we'll get those fixed as soon as we can. Um, but first, let's go ahead and just make this look a little nicer. Uh, we'll just do that one there, and that can just be normal. We're going to extend that out. Okay, so we've got a little bit of area. Um, let's look at some other things that we can do uh, to this little area that we've made. We want to go ahead and add a couple characters to it. So that gives us a chance to create some objects here. Notice that there's other kinds of events here too, warps, scripts, and signposts. But we're just going to use a template here to make a different type of person. So first we'll make an NPC. Uh, we can just have this guy here. And the way that you make these, oh dear. It's thinking about it. There we go froze there for a second, but we're good now. Um, so yeah, the way that you, you use these is you just click on the character, you drag it in to the map like that, and that gave us a map, uh, a character, and it did go ahead and give him some uh, text here as well. It says, I'm an NPC. So we can make him say whatever we want. Um, uh, Hi there. And that's what he'll end up saying in the game. We'll just kind of put him over here and we'll let him wander around. Um, let's have something else here. Instead of just using the NPC, we'll use the item and we're going to have that contain a potion. And we'll just drag that in. And that's going to automatically find a flag for us. So flag 21 wasn't being used, so it'll use that one. And it did create a script for us for the potion as well. And just for good measure, let's also go ahead and put in um, one more thing. Let's put in a... Uh, a guy who wants to teach us a tutor move. So we'll put in a tutor, and this little girl looks good. We'll drop her in here, and we'll have her face to the left. There we go. And we can see from here, here's her script. You know, want to learn a cool move. 
uh, which Pokemon to learn the move, enjoy the move, and let's have her teach Mega Kick. And we can change all of her text around if we want to, but we're not going to do that right now. Um, and there you go, we've made a little map area that's attached to the, the uh, Route 1. So you can go over here, it'll have some Pokemon in the grass for us to fight. And that's about it. Let's, let's throw some flowers in here to make it a little pretty. Um, so yeah, at this point we can make maps, we can move them around, we can adjust sizes, we can add some wild Pokemon. Uh, and as you saw, there's a couple glitches in it that we'll, we'll try to get fixed um, during the, the January update. Um, but that is a brief introduction to the new Hexmedic Advanced Map Editor. Um, I hope you guys enjoy using it.